Tonight we're going to talk about the Beatitudes. As I said, it's a very important topic. Um, and uh, just an, as an introduction, there is this city in Brazil that's named Dona Eusebia. It's a very small city. Probably like 3,000 is the population. But that city, they plant fruit trees and, and plants and trees in general, and they export those plants to all over Brazil. They probably is one of the biggest exporter of uh, trees to Brazil. They export about two million trees per year. And like just 2,000, 3,000 people, they say like each uh, individual in the city is, uh, by the quantity they, they export, is like is equivalent to each uh, person on the city, uh, as equivalent as if they create and export 235 trees, each person. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a big number. And um, what is even more uh, uh, impressive about Don Eusebia is that they use a process to um, create those plants that's called, I think in English is grafting. Okay, everybody's familiar with grafting. Mm -hmm. Grafting in Sherto is a process where you put two plants together and uh, the result of that graf grafting, is that the correct way, Steve? Yeah. yeah. The, the result of the grafting is going to be a plant that is going to be uh, stronger, healthier, and will produce fruits in an early stage. So I have a picture here uh, just to show you uh, uh, some of the, th these are pictures from, from Don Eusebia grafting uh, plants. So you see here, this, this is like, we don't have this fruit here, jabuticaba. It's very small, it's, it's, a, it's like, a, looks like a grape, but doesn't taste like a grape. In normal circumstances, it takes 14 years to produce. Uh, because they use grafting, it, you get the fruits like in very, very, very quickly. And here is strawberry, and they have all these, these other plants here. This is the one that I really like, it's called Saborosa because there is a taste inside, but they, they use this grafting technique, uh, and then the result, as I said, is a, a health and a strong plant. So, as an introduction for us, I would also want to say that in our journey to life, and uh, when I say our journey of our life, our life is not only this life we're living here, we come from many, many reincarnations. In our journey, we all on this planet receive this process of gravity. And that happens when other spirits come to our planet and join with us. And the result was a lot of learning, a lot of improvement. Uh, we got a lot of graftings from the past, but the most known one is from the spirits that came from Capella. Capella is a star far away from here, and uh, people from Capella, the spirits, we call them Capellinos, and the Capellinos, they had an expressive um, background, expressive intellectual background very, very knowledgeable of the laws and how, of the laws of how the universe works, but their moral development were very similar to the planet Earth when our planet was still a primitive planet. So they came here because Capella was going to move to another stage and some part of the population from Capella was not ready because morally they were good. But now, morally, they were not good. Intellectually, they were very good. So they came here, and they brought a lot of help to the population of the planet. That's the ones that incarnate here on our planet. And um, 
what is interesting in this in this process is that they they taught us a lot of things, and the people that really deep study some of the uh, topics of the spiritism, they said a lot of information that is on the old testimony was given to the people who wrote the old testimony from people from Capella. Okay, so uh, there's a grafting. So, and, uh, and, and that's one example I'm gonna bring here tonight with the Beatitudes topic is, uh, is a content from Isaiah on the Old Testament, chapter nine, uh, verse second. That's what is written. The people who walked in darkness had seen a great light. And those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. So we can see here a prediction of the upcoming of Jesus Christ to the planet. We see here, some used to say that the, the Capellinus come and they were walking in darkness because Capella was much, much better. But when Christ came, they see this great light. And the ones that were incarnating, forced reincarnation here, and they come and go and come and go and all the incarnations, those who lived, and the land was deep darkness because it was very dark, on them the light has shined. So we see here, for our preparation to get into the Beatitude verses, that in one side of our planet was, let's imagine a dark circle here, was dark. What does that mean? Dark means little evolution, people living in, uh, with uh, atavism. You know what atavism is? I, I, the word is English is the same is a characteristic of something that emerge on us, but that miss some generation. Let's say we were very aggressive at some point in time, then we stop being aggressive. Then later on, we become aggressive again. That's an atavism. So that darkness come with a lot of atavism, a lot of fixed ideas in some negative uh, areas. For example, let's say someone uh, was very aggressive to you and you feel very hurt by what that person did. And then your idea is fixed, is almost like a set in stone and you cannot change your mind, you cannot forgive that person. That's what a fixed idea is and, and you stay on the dark. Because a fixed idea is something negative either because you hate someone that really hurt you, but you hate that person. You cannot forgive that. You cannot forget that. That can hold you for centuries on the same place. One fixed idea of some negative thoughts can hold you for centuries. On the other side, from that prediction from Isaiah, we're going to see here on this side, a bright circle, and here is the light. And the light is an invitation for us to consider feelings that are more of high vibration. It's an invitation for our heart you know, to, to grow. Is uh, everything that is uh, pure, everything that's good is, is on this side. So, and then what you can see among this dark circle and this white bright circle of light in the middle when you see both of them, we see and then you say what? What a con trust con contrast or a contrast or a, almost a paradox. When you see the experiences, because even though this refers to the people that were here on the planet, a lot of us have no idea who Jesus is. A lot of us 
are still living in that dark, like still living our in and out of life and get frustrated and get depressed and get anxious and get stressed, and, uh, and that's one side. And on the other side, they say, become a great light with teachings for another, another ideas, another consideration. Do you know why? Because Jesus Christ came from the celestial worlds. I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago when we studied the category of the worlds, and then we have the word of test, the one we're living to today, right, here. Then you have a regeneration, then you have a hap road, then you have celestial road. Each stage of these roads take millions of years. And Jesus, as a pure spirit, he came from the celestial road to the road that we live today. That's why it's a great light and that shines so much because we have so much experience on the dark. Again, there is a contrast. And if a person or any one of us is really comfortable and familiar with this dark and you feel okay with it, we will not understand anything tonight. because Jesus is specifically on these beatitudes, he talked to us to our heart, to our feelings, not to our intelligence. Because the Beatitudes is the heart of the Sermon of the Mount. We did it a year ago here, right? The Sermon of the Mount with the pictures of the mountain and everything. Uh, and, um, and the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes is the heart of the Mount of the Sermon. And the Mount of the Sermon is the essence of everything that Jesus told us. To a point that Gandhi, that was not Christian, he was an Hinduist, he said if every teachings on this planet was lost, everything from all the religion was lost, and the only thing left was the, the Sermon of the Mount, that the Beatitudes is the heart, Gandhi said nothing is lost, everything is there, and that's what you're going to uh, see tonight. So on the, oh yeah, the Beatitudes. On the, on the Bible, we're gonna see a lot of parables that uh, we can see uh, trees, you know, trees. Uh, for some reason, today we're getting into this natural thing of gravity. <laughs> that came is because, you know, my wife is in Don Eusebio, that's why I came with the idea just lately, uh, but uh, we see a lot of trees, trees that are producing fruits, trees are not doing anything, right? The trees on the Bible are us. When Jesus say, this tree is not producing, it, he's referring to us. So we're gonna put the Beatitudes tonight on a tree. So you can see the magnitude of these teachings that this light towards us. So. The first beatitude, the first one, is this. Hey, Donna, you're going to be my uh, official reader tonight? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, can you read for us? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, yeah, so that was the first teaching. The poor in spirit. And I like in English because in English they say the poor in spirit. That means... Um, in Portuguese, they have the poor of spirits. Then now the latest translation of the Bible from Haroldo Dutra Gias, they say, uh, em spirit, what is, is correct. So uh, the poor in spirits, he was not referring to the people that are poor in ignorance or that are, are not rich. The poor in spirit, he's talking about the ones that are humbled. And when he said humbled, he does not refer to the rich or to the poor. Because there are people that are very rich, 
and there are rambled or rumbled. And there are people that are very poor and that are very selfish. So it has nothing to do. Humble means I have a lot to learn. I am loping to learn. I don't know anything. I don't know everything. I still have a lot to learn. And he's saying that uh, the king of heaven is the one, the first thing is you need to be open to learn. If you think we know everything in a stage that we are, this planet where we still feel connection with the dark side a lot, we are drunk. <laughs> because we all have a lot to learn, and when you are open for it, then the spirits can come and help us. If you are not open, they cannot help us. So that is the, probably the first requirement to be on the kingdom of heaven is to be open to learn. And also to recognize that the most rich being on this planet is our creator, is God. And the spiritism give us a lot of help with that because the spiritism tell us about, about the law of God. From the law of reincarnation, we know that we all here in this room have lived many lives, have spoke many languages, have lived in many countries, have, have a lot of experience. We learn that, so that is still a lot to be learned. But we know that. From the spiritism and from the God, we know that is a law of cause and effect. And by studying the law of cause and effect, was a couple of weeks ago, right? We saw how big, how great is the love of our Creator towards us. Because studying the law of cause and effect, we know that things that we did, did wrong may can be alleviated by intervention of people that like us, by us working on the good on the correct things. We learned that some debts can be split in many reincarnations because maybe the debt's so big, I did I commit so many mistakes. Then the spirits come and say, okay, one is not gonna be enough. I'm gonna split this in three or four, little bit here so you can you can take a, a breath, right? And and continue. So we have all this contact with God. So uh, that is the pulling spirits. The one that recognize, and, and when you see the category, remember we study here the categories of the spirits, we know that we have a lot to learn. If you are aware of that, then we will be, we will be blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirits. And if you are going to uh, summarize this in one way, there are many ways, but I put here, get proactive and thirst of learning. So... That's what Jesus is saying on the first beatitude. You need to be open to learn. If you are not open to learn, don't even register, right? <laughs> if you don't want to learn, why you go to a school? Don't even go, right? So um, then the second one, re official reader. <laughs> Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Okay. <coughs> you know stage our present situation here on our planet we still face a lot of instability in our life and we know by the teachings of the spirits that we are here to progress and you need to progress in two areas we need to progress in intellect and we need to progress in moral right these are the two wings of evolution that we need to change. Hey, I just said we need to change. Yeah, we need to move from this point of intellect to that point of intellect. We need to move from this point of moral to that point of moral. And then you need to break out the barriers from things we have, from things we're still going to acquire. I have a friend of mine that talked to me today. She's facing some computer challenges and she's going crazy. Right? She needs to learn, and she, 
and then she she's facing she's, she's moaning she's suffering because suffering in our present current situation is a still part of our life now this is interesting because the pure spirits like jesus they already acquire all the intellectual knowledge they could they already acquired all the moral they could. Do you know what happened? They do not mourn. They do not suffer like us. They are not afraid. They have courage because they have all the knowledge. They have all the moral. When Jesus was captured, was, was arrested, they sent to arrest him uh, a special force, an uh, army force, special force, it's not regular soldiers, it was a special force. They would say, they say not all the soldiers went on that special force, but the, the attachment that they mentioned, it counts 600 soldiers. And they went there with swords and torches. And imagine if you know because they were in this garden on top of the mountain, they probably have seen the people, the soldiers come. What could we do, right? We couldn't probably cry, right? Or hiding under the table or under a rock or something. Who come to receive the soldiers? Jesus. Who start the conversation with the soldiers? Jesus. He come to them and said, who are you looking for? And then the soldier said, Jesus of Nazareth. And then he said, I am. And on the Bible, they said the soldiers stepped back. They stepped back because they were impressed with such a superiority. See, see what the light you are talking about tonight? I talk about Jesus. That's what he does. It's a pure spirit coming towards us. And we are introducing Jesus to everyone that if you still have not heard in details what he did and how he was. So they step back and guess who they cover, start the conversation again? Jesus. The soldiers didn't say anything when he said, I am. They step back and, and the Bible doesn't say they say anything. Then Jesus come back again and reinstate the question and say, who are you looking for? And then they probably say, Jesus of Nazareth. And then they said, I already told you, I am. Now you take me and leave all these people, the ones that are following him, leave all them free. And went with them. So that is, that is what a pure spirit is. He doesn't mourn. He doesn't cry. Because he comprehends everything. Same thing happened on the cross. He was on the cross. The hands were open. And then he wasn't fair. It wasn't fair what was going on. He was right there on the cross. He looked to the heaven and said, God, forgive them because they don't know what I are they doing. See, the perspective is a complete different perspective of a pure spirit from us. So we are dealing with the light and we are dealing with the dark. So in our life, we are going to cry. But that is a good news here. Yes, we are going to cry on the stage we are. We are going to cry. You know, I always tell sometimes here when my mom was sick and was in the process of, you know, dying, and we were there suffering with her, suffering deeply with her. So we are going to cry. It's a part of our evolution because we didn't conquer all the intellect, all the moral we need. But Jesus said, Blessed are the ones who mourn, because we need to mourn in the stage we are, for they will be comforted. And that is also as important as the first part, because we all are going to be comforted of our crying. So we, we need to uh, look for this comfort. There is not one single problem that's not going to be resolved. Any problem, any one of us is living right now, is going to be resolved. 
maybe we're going to change one way, maybe the life will change. I love Divaldo Franco because he said, when we are in the middle of a room and there is no way out, not to the north, not to the back, not to the left, not to the right, he said, the help will come from the top, you come by helicopter. <laughs> he jokes like that, because it will come. If you look back in our lives, we can see that. I'm not, you know, imagining things here. How many things, problems we had, like maybe two, three years ago, we had like a, a very difficult problem that we could not deal with, and then suddenly maybe life resolved by itself, right? Or maybe something resolved, and then now we are here with another opportunity every day. So, and that is the message he's saying. Blessed are the ones who mourn. We are going to cry. It's okay to cry. It's okay to say, a eh, computer is making me crazy. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But we will be comforted in one way or another. So to summarize this, I put it there. Accept challenges and divine assistance. Okay, so now, reader. Blessed are the meek. Yeah, the earth from the plan, everything in our planet is planned. There is a perfect order. Uh, Alain Kardec said, the confusion is because our limited ability to evaluate. But everything works in a perfect order, res re uh, respecting our free will, everything works as it should be. And if you look at the stars, the sun comes at the same time every day. The stars group in order. Everything has, has, has a plan. So, and one plan for our planet is that our, plan, our Earth will be better. Our planet Earth will be better than it is today. We are actually in a, in a phase where we're going to get ready to change pretty soon. I don't know how many years, but pretty soon our planet will be better and better and better. And the ones that are going to stay here should be meek, should be nice, should be gentle, should be soft. If you are too aggressive, our personality, there will be no place for us because the planet will be better. The ones who are not, who the ones who still want to resolve things on the, how you call like Moises, like the Italian, the Italian, the, the Luigi, what? Italian law. The Italian law, right? Yeah, yeah. Tooth by tooth, eye by eye. Uh, we have some people in our life today, in our daily life, that wants to walk like this. The people caught you, are going to cut the person. The people, you know, say something, want to say back. Those cannot have here. Just the meek will be here. The people that are nice, the people that are, are friendly. And that is, that is the measure that he's saying. You know, we need to walk in our in our meekness, if that is uh, this term. Uh, we saw a uh, couple of weeks ago here when we were looking about the, uh, the mansion peaceful on the Umbrau when Andrea Luis stayed working for three, three years. He mentioned about these spirits outside complaining and, uh, and, and fighting among themselves on the wind, the dark wind and the mud. And, uh, and Andrea Luis was inside, there's a proof sound inside uh, of that, that building, and then they would say, oh, why can we not bring those spirits inside and help them? They are suffering so much. And then Druzo, the director, said, we can't, because if they come inside, they will fight with everybody here. That's their personality. They need to change their personality. They need to be more responsible for what they do. So that's what Jesus is saying here. The planet will get better, but we need to be, we need to soft. We need to get it loose, <laughs> is, right? Get it loose, I mean, relax, okay? take it easy. We need, we need to be like in, in that way. Um, and the message here is show uh, co cooperative feelings and attitudes. That's, that's summarize that. So, uh, Donna? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Yes. 
I love this one because they said that the righteousness should be as important as the basic necessity of life as hunger and thirst. So he is saying that if you work for righteousness, if you would seek righteousness, we will be blessed. And work for righteousness is very, 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 very important. Um, it's, is the word justice the same thing as righteousness? No, right? Kind of? Yeah, because in Portuguese we say, we say justice. And, uh, and when we talk about righteousness, I remember uh, judges, I remember lawyers, and then I remember a picture of, you see usually in a law office, what picture is that? The blind lady holding the scale. Exactly, the scales. So how we are going to be righteous? We need a scale. We need to balance in our scale what we did. And that's what he's saying. We need to do this constantly. We need to balance our attitudes. When? Whenever we can. Maybe at night before you sleep and say, hmm, what I did this, I did this. Is that really the maximum I can take from myself? You know, or should I do better? Should I not do better? Right? And that is a, a detail here that are going to go back to our big circles that are still here, right? Emmanuel, the spirit Emmanuel, said that our mind is the mirror of our, reflect the mirror of our life. So, and then the, the thing is here, the mirror. If a mirror is on a completely dark room, can it reflect anything? No, right? If a mirror is in a dark room, it cannot reflect anything. So when Emmanuel told us that our mind is the mirror of our life, he's saying that in order for us to do the balance, we need to analyze the, what we did under the light, not under the dark. Under the light means with the teachings that we are learning. Under the, the dark means, you know, under the dark. Like the Italian, like oh, eye by eyes, truth by truth, that is the dark. Emmanuel said the mind should be analyzed, or what we did, the, do, the right or wrongs, under the light. Okay, uh, for example, if uh, Maria give a bad answer to Donna, and then Donna said, Donna look at Maria and say, and think. Yeah, Maria is probably very tired and very worried about the new work that she got. That's, that's why she's like that. She analyzed her under the light. But if she come and say, Maria is very crazy, she's analyzing her under the dark. Okay? So, and, um, so what you're saying here is for us to balance. Jesus on the Beatitudes say we need to evaluate constantly. And that makes sense because before here we saw we're going to grow, right? We're going to grow, we're going to progress, so we need to balance. And here we say do regular assessments of your actions under the light. Okay. Blessed are the, uh, uh, okay, oh, uh, Donna. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Yeah, so here is pretty clear. We need to love, because love is, is what really make us grow, uh, make us to develop, make us to, uh, to fulfill our, our, our destiny here, is, is to love and, 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 and to grow. Um, I, and, and being merciful can uh, drive mercy to us. I, I, in Brazil, I had a friend who worked in this uh, spiritism center, and uh, he was giving some raffles to sell. 
And the lady who gave him the raffles were very strict. She was very, she was doing a lot of work. She was very strict. So he sell the raffles when he was going to do the balance was missing some money. And then he kind of said, well, I can tell the lady that I, I lost the money, I didn't do the balance, right? And she's gonna be very upset. And this whole charity work may will turn, you know, not so charitable anymore. And he didn't have a money. So, but w when I say he didn't have a money, the money he had, he needs to pay his expenses and everything and food and everything. But he, he measured, he said, no, do you know, I'm not gonna let her be more upset than she already is with so many different people rapping. So sh he got the money that he didn't have and gave to her. And she didn't even know that he had lost some. And then he told me that there was this uh, internal lottery among the employees on his company. And you give like maybe like say $1 or something. And then if you win one, like maybe two, three hundred dollars or something. And he said that was the only time he won the lottery. <laughs> and then he said the amount he got was exactly the amount he gave to her. And maybe a little bit more that he was able to eat a lunch or something. So, so the mercy uh, gives uh, the mercy. We have, we have, so we, we can see a lot of, of cases like this. There is another one that Chico Xavier was passing by and then this lady come and ask for for help, and then he was going to a, to a mediumship meeting. Then he said, no, I don't have time right now, so uh, I'll talk to you later. I promise I'll talk to you later. Then he continued walk. Then Emmanuel appeared to him and say, Chico, go there and help the lady. So I said, oh, okay, okay. Emmanuel said he follows. So he went there and said, hey, hold on. No, I, I, I want to hear uh, what you have to say. And it was some orientation, so he gave all the orientation. I uh, spent some time with her, and then she said, thank you, thank you very much. And then he was walking, and then Emmanuel, and when he was walking, Emmanuel stopped and said, Chico, uh, look back. And then he looked back, he see kind of a light. And then when Chico went, Emmanuel said, he looked at you and said, God bless you, Chico. And then that light come from her vibration towards Chico. So the mercy, drives mercy and uh, we need it Yara, we, we need it so uh, be compassionate and kind that's what Jesus was saying so and then we have here Donna Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. yeah so we s you see here by this passage that we are gonna see God not with our eyes but with with our our heart and um, and uh, and here this pure heart means like we need to constantly focus on the good things, you know. Uh, so we can um, we can make our our heart pure. We can make our heart clean. A lot of us keep um, our heart with a lot of trash. You know, and when you keep like talking about things, talking about people, and and, and that can really um, make our heart uh, un unclean. So the pure heart means focus on the good as much as, as you can when you talk about something. A lot of times we we keep our heart like we want to say it is nice, but in fact it is not very nice. Right? And then sometimes we, we keep like um, bad ideas, bad advisements. For example, someone can come to us and maybe the person is very happy and then the person want to say, hey, um, for example, John, I, I'm very happy. And then if the heart is not clean, John, maybe you'll come to the person and say, well, you are happy because you don't know the news I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you give the news and the person is happy, then suddenly the person is unhappy because the heart is not poor, is not clean. Um, so the pure heart is like being uh, uh, focused on, on the right thing. So uh, focus only on good. And then we have here uh, Donna. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
Yeah, the peacemakers are actually the ones that really uh, address um, all the, the qualities uh, to act uh, to make the road a, a better road. It goes mostly outside of the comfort zone to help. I mean, a great example here is Bezerra de Menezes, that they said he didn't have distance and no time to help the sick people. When they, they need, people are like stressed and, and need help, he could like, could be far away, money, he doesn't even care, but doesn't matter the time, the distance he used to go. And another example we could bring here is the Apostle Paul, because um, here we go more with like big things, and, and the uh, Corinto, the city was uh, a beach city, and um, and was and in Corinto lives the Corinthians, right? And uh, and he built a church there, uh, but people because the city was like a lot of luxury and a lot of um, people trying not to respect the others, and um, there were all kinds of. Um, crazy parties going on in, in Corinto, and, and he was, he became aware of that by people telling him Corinto is really bad, it's, it's, it, it, things are not going well over there. And, uh, and I, I was thinking when he got that information, he could make a lot of decisions. He could say, okay, I'm going to close Corinto Church because I have so many churches already, right? One more, one less. Let's close that church. Or, or maybe he could say, give me the names of people that are not really behaving well. I'm going to fire those people and, and put some other people there, right? Uh, he could have some make some decisions. But what he did, in fact, he wrote to them the most compassionate and peaceful letter, actually two letters, but telling them about love, reminding them the principles again, like our work again, like it's almost like if one of us really fall down from our what we want to be, and then instead of being accused, you being like, have a chance to rework your feelings and your learning process. So that's what he wrote for them, and that was really an example of a, of a peacemaker. And uh, it was so, nice what he did that for people that fell in love because a lot of the Corinthians they fell in love I mean they they they, they fall by you know sexual behave and, uh, and and that kind of of uh, immoral things and for them Paul wrote the poem of love that's where the poem of love is on the Bible is on the letter for the Corinthians where he said, even if I speak all the languages of the angels, but if I don't have love, I'm nobody, right? And then he progressed without those uh, teachings there. So you see, that's, that's a, a perfect example of a peacemaker. You get a problem, but instead of working with the dark, right, respond and attacking, you think. You think, then you give the best of you, not the worst of you. And that's, that's what the peacemakers does. Um, focus only on good. And then, uh, someone just simplified the, all the Beatitudes in this teaching here, but we still have another one that we're gonna bring today. Bless are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Because this one, some people say is equivalent to, uh, to which one? Oh, to that one, yeah. But here we can actually add that um, when uh, you define your way, when you define how you want to do it for your life, you still are going to be criticized by people around you and actually even by yourself because we have this, all this experience that we have this atavism from the past that tell us to work different, to do things different, and then we always going to be um, attempted to go back to things that we're doing, to you know think like in, in the most common way, instead of thinking 
as on the on the light uh, on on the light ray. So, and the word here would be I don't know if I wrote it. Yeah, I would say be perseverant with within your beliefs, and uh, the word here I would say would be like discipline. When we decide to get all these knowledges that come from the good spirits, that come from Jesus, and we decide to implement this, because see, why the Capellinos come here? Do you know why the Capellinos come here? Because they had all the intellectual knowledge, but they could not practice it. There is a distance there, right? It's so easy to come to our logic thinking, but we cannot practice. So we need to practice. So these are the teachings, and we would add on this last one, discipline. Because we all make our choice. See, we could be home watching TV and then we decide to be here tonight. So we all make our choices already. So what is missing for us to really inject these teachings on us? Is missing us to meditate, to reflect on them, and to use a little bit of discipline. And that Chico, when he asked Emmanuel, how can I, what should I do to really grasp this knowledge of spiritism, Chico asked Emmanuel when he was starting his mediumship, and then Emmanuel told him three things, Chico, and Chico opened his ear to her the first thing, and Emmanuel said, discipline, and discipline, and discipline. Mm -hmm. So the three things were, were discipline. So, and that is the Beatitudes that we brought it uh, tonight for everybody just thinking that uh, Jesus the pure spirit our old brother in evolution we can see Jesus and the spiritism will hear this a lot that Jesus is our bro old brother in evolution meaning that he's already there all the way there and we probably if we go and I'm uh, making an analogy of the age, maybe we're like a three-year-old, each one of us, and Jesus is like an old brother that was like has a PhD already and has a great character, great personality, know everything, and then he he can guide us. So, and that is that is why he brings these beatitudes to us, and uh, and with Jesus, he said, "I came." to give you the light, and light in abundance. So the two, ab abundance. abundance, yeah, abundance, yeah. So actually we put the message here, it's, it's a different way of saying it. Uh, I came that you might have abundant life. Yeah, that's in one way, but in the other parts they say abundant uh, life and life in abundance. And life here, it's not a biological life. It's not a biological life. It's a qualitative life with the laws of God. It's a little bit different. It's a little light that can move our spirit to the front, to fulfill our destiny of progressing ourselves and have better opportunities in the future. So thank you very much. And Let's continue our studies. Thank you.